One of the last remaining conflicts from the Cold War ended more than a year ago when Cuba and the United States decided to restore diplomatic relations and reopen their embassies. One of the major conditions to the deal was a prisoner exchange between both sides. Three Cuban spies for the American contractor, Alan Gross. The leader of the Cuban spies, intelligence officer Gerardo Hernandez, was serving two life sentences plus 15 years for conspiracy to commit murder and espionage. He feared he might die in prison, but now he is back in Havana beginning a new life. Our correspondent in Havana, Michael Voss, has this exclusive interview with Gerardo Hernandez. Today, the United States of America is changing its relationship with the people of Cuba. Hours before U.S. President Barack Obama made his historic joint announcement with Cuba's leader Raul Castro that they'd end their Cold War hostilities, two planes took off in opposite directions. It was a prisoner swap, clearing the way to restoring diplomatic relations. One plane carried three Cuban intelligence agents who'd spent the past 16 years in jail for conspiracy to commit espionage against the United States. The other aircraft carried the U.S. contractor Alan Gross to freedom. He was five years into a 15-year sentence for installing Internet connections in Cuba outside of the government's control. The Cubans were greeted at the airport by President Raul Castro as national heroes, the last of five spies to be released. Then came the emotional encounters with their families. The Cuban government had long fought for their return, claiming the so-called Cuban Five had not been sent to spy on the U.S., but to infiltrate militant anti-Castro groups in Florida following a terrorist bombing campaign in Havana. Their leader was Gerardo Hernandez, a soldier who'd fought in Angola during the independence wars there and went on to become a senior intelligence officer. Thank you very much for agreeing to talk to CCTV. I was offered an exclusive interview which took place in a small meeting room at the Cuban government's International Press Center. There, he told me of his relief at finally coming home. You feel great. I have to tell you, you feel great. Uh, it's been uh, an incredible year, many emotions. Was it difficult to adapt? It was difficult, uh, mostly during the first month, because uh, consider that uh, we are not talking about one year or two years, we are talking about 16 years and three months in uh, prison. And uh, prisoners have a code. For example, when you talk to each other, you don't touch, you don't get too close to one another. And then from one day to another, we are in Cuba, surrounded by many people that want to hug you. And it was kind of uh, difficult to adapt. Gerardo Hernandez and other members of the Cuban Five were arrested in Miami in September 1998 when the FBI broke up a Cuban spy ring known as the WASP network. Gerardo was in charge of the cell. My role as an uh, intelligence officer was to uh, direct some uh, agents that were uh, already operating or will be operating in, in U.S. soil. Cuba had suffered a series of terrorist bombings during the period, some aimed at hotels and restaurants in a bid to deter tourists. In one attack, an Italian was killed. The Cubans infiltrated a group called Brothers to the Rescue, who used light aircraft to help rescue rafters trying to flee Cuba. But they also regularly entered Cuban airspace, flying over Havana, dropping anti-Castro leaflets. In 1996, Cuban MiG shot down two of their planes over international waters, killing all four on board. Gerardo Hernandez took the blame. You were given two life sentences for conspiracy to murder because of the shooting down of the Brothers to Rescue plane and the four people who died on that. Was your intelligence responsible for that shooting down? Absolutely not. Uh, what happened is that they needed to blame somebody, and they chose me. 
uh, I remember the press at the beginning used to say, oh, he sent the flight plan to Cuba. No, the flight plan was sent by the Federal Aviation Administration of the U.S. as a normal procedure. All right, he told Cuba that they would be flying that day. No, Jose Basulto himself, the leader of Brothers to Rescue, gave a press conference and announced that he would be flying that day. That's a huge nonsense, but the government was able to found me guilty. It was in Miami. In Miami, you accused me of being the responsible for global warming and being a Cuban agent, I would be found guilty of that. For years, the Cuban government had fought a major international campaign calling for their release. They featured on May Day parades and their pictures could be seen across the island. The five are household names in Cuba, and their continued incarceration became the focal point of Cuba's antagonistic relationship with Washington. Did you ever think that you would be free, or did you believe you'd die in prison? It's a, it's a, a complex issue, because on one hand, we hope and we uh, knew that uh, we will be back. In Cuba one day. Solo les digo una cosa. Volverán. We had in 2001 that famous speech where Fidel assured to the Cuban people that we would come back. That was something that we remember every day. But on the other hand, we knew that we were part of a conflict between Cuba and the U.S. that had extended for many years and the possibility that the two would die in prison and never come back to Cuba was real. Are you bitter towards the United States for the treatment you received there? Uh, not at all, not at all. I was doing a job and uh, I knew when I accepted this mission the risks that I was taking. What happened was that we felt in the middle of the long conflict against Cuba and the U.S. and uh, the U.S. saw in us a way of uh, punish Cuba and the Cuban Revolution. Now that he's back, Gerardo Hernandez has a new challenge, becoming a father for the first time at the age of 50. His daughter was born less than a month after he was set free. His wife, Adriana Perez, had never been given a U.S. visa to visit him in prison. But as U.S.-Cuban relations started to improve, she approached a visiting U.S. Senator, Patrick Leahy, to press Washington to allow her to receive artificial insemination. They agreed, but the condition was that it should be kept secret. I do remember a few days after you came back and you went to the National Assembly and you were in the gallery, the three of you with your, with your wives, and everyone went, Right. <laughs> His wife's pregnant. What's happened? He's only been back a week. Right. That was a soap opera because people didn't know anything about it. So when, when I came back and the, the first appearance of her on TV, they, they noticed the, the big belly. There was all kind of uh, speculations on uh, the population until the moment that I was able to give some explanation. What next for you? There are lots of rumors that some of the five might enter politics. Would you take a position if you were offered one? I am a soldier, and uh, my main goal in my life, my only plan is to keep serving my country anywhere that somebody uh, or my government consider that I will be useful. But regarding those rumors, I have to tell you that we have been out of the country for many years and there are people in Cuba that have long careers, even young people that have long careers of uh, politicians, of uh, leaders, that are uh, way better prepared than the five to lead the, the country in any post, uh, provinces, uh, etc. Spoken like a true politician. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Hernandez and the other Cuban Five spies were awarded the island nation's highest honor, Heroes of the Cuban Republic. Since leaving the United States, they have traveled all over Cuba as well as parts of Africa and Latin America to thank people for their support and efforts to secure their freedom.